So as we mentioned in part one, which you probably can see here, we, uh, we decided to do some aluminum casting. And we're very excited because we took our 3D model and we've already designed it and sliced it and now we're ready to print it for the next step in our whole entire journey. So sit back and enjoy. So here we are at the printer. Uh, we put the SD card in and selected the file. And as you saw there, it just finished its uh, auto bed leveling calculations. But um, it's starting the first layer now. Uh, we used uh, Polymaker PLA, uh, which is fantastic stuff. Uh, we'll put a link in the, in the description. But uh, it printed great. Uh, had a slightly glossy texture to it, but um, it was it, it was a very easy material to use, and uh, and it looks fantastic. Um, as you can kind of see here, we'll we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. The uh, the solid layers looked gorgeous, and um, it really did print great. Uh, it's worth noting that this is actually the first test that we did. And uh, because we didn't put the skirts on the edge, as I mentioned before, uh, the corners actually did peel a little bit, so we actually had to print another one. Um, and that's where we made the change. Thanks to the first layer temp being uh, at the 201 we mentioned, uh, it stuck just enough, especially with that skirt. And uh, when we pulled it off, it, it really looked great. It, uh, it was a nice flat print. Um, it did slightly warp over time, uh, just sitting in the, in the shop. So we actually had to kind of bend it back before using it. But... Uh, you know, that, that happens. <laughs> Alright, so as I mentioned before, we uh, wanted to do a second print not using the plate in the sand casting. So this here is the uh, G-Create rocket that we printed in carbon fiber, no, a protopasta uh, carbon fiber. And it printed beautifully, that's why we like using the material. And uh, instead of using just normal um, plaster of Paris, we were going to use this stuff called Perfect Cast. It's supposed to be a little bit stronger and um, hopefully hold up the temperatures better. And here you can see how the actual model will sit in this plaster jar here, or container. Uh, the little things on top are actually uh, where the aluminum will be poured into, so we added these little kind of extenders. Uh, as far as using the plaster, it seemed to be the same as uh, basically plaster of Paris. You know, mix water and uh, the powder, uh, use gloves, and then... Um, there's a very special ratio. I think it was 3 to 1, if I remember. So I've never really used plaster, or not too much of it anyway, so I wasn't really too sure about how to actually uh, to mix it, but um, I guess you're supposed to put the water in, and then um, slowly kind of powder in and flake in the actual plaster. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert on this, and this is just something we were testing out, but it seemed to work pretty well in the end. Um, I, I think I was pouring it a little bit too slowly. So by the end, I kind of had to really clump it in there because it was setting, or at least starting to kind of slightly set up. So see, this is going a little slow here. And then um, kept mixing and mixing. We actually used more than we thought we would because uh, as you kind of mix in the powder, it actually, you know, kind of dissolves pretty, pretty rapidly. So this is the... Uh, the second part, I think we're still mixing more. We haven't, we actually uh, haven't poured it yet. And here you can see the actual pour. We put this little metal uh, piece of uh, wire going across to hold the uh, the object up in the air. We want to make sure we had enough clearance all around the actual rocket so that um, hopefully the plaster wouldn't crack or anything like that. And then <laughs> you see we fell a little bit short, so <laughs> we mixed a lot more and tried to get it in there pretty quickly. They see the first part set just a little bit, so there's actually a line when we pulled it out, but it, it didn't seem to affect anything. So as we were done pouring, we made sure to tap the sides of the uh, the jar like crazy, just to try and get any air bubbles out, which you can kind of see some on the top there. Um, and make sure we also kept trying to move the rocket so it was actually centered in the actual container. But in the end, it seemed like it actually worked out pretty well. It, the, the plaster heated up properly, it uh, you know dried within about two days it took of total drying time, but uh, it was really, really s solid stuff. So to get the rocket out of the plaster, you have to actually melt it out. Well, you're supposed to use a kiln, but we didn't have a kiln, so instead we actually put it in a campfire, <laughs> which which worked out well. It actually melted out great, but as you see, it actually s it cracked and split apart a lot. Uh, what we probably should have done was heated it in an oven prior the, to putting it in the fire, but we, we put it in the center of a campfire, and we built all the fire around it, So and we let it go all night. So it really melted out great, and funny enough, you can just blow on the, the carbon fiber PLA, and it just came right out. Like it, it, it melted out perfectly, or actually it kind of disintegrated. But you can see here, we got great detail, and the layering is perfect. 
All right, so now that we had our, our prints for the actual plates done, and we had the actual rockets printed and everything, and we had them cast in the plaster, it was time to build the backyard blast furnace. So as for the actual blast furnace, we had a one inlet for the air to come into. Um, we had a little 12 volt, I think DC, um, or actually no, I think it was converted to 120 volt, a uh, little blower fan that actually fed air. And we also had a big cast iron pot. And, you know, in the end we realized, um, we, we tried doing this for about a day, and the pot just would not get hot enough. We just didn't have enough fuel and not enough heat. So we ended up going for a much smaller um, container, which is actually turned out to be, I think, a steel kind of cauldron. And that worked great. And we also used a hair dryer because it was pumping in that much more air. So the first one was kind of a bust, but uh, that's what we're showing here. And um, in the end, you know, the hair dryer just puts in so much, so much air, it worked out great. As for the uh, green sand uh, that we wanted to make, so I guess green sand is a, a combination of, uh, I guess, a binder and sand. In this case, we use bentonite clay, which is basically kitty litter. And you're supposed to kind of ground that into a powder and mix that with the sand, and then slowly add water to try and make it so that it'll basically clump. Uh, we <laughs> spent the better part of a half a day trying to figure this out, but in the end, you know, the sand didn't seem to clump as well as we wanted it to, so we actually ended up adding a lot more clay than what was recommended. I think it was a 10 to 1 ratio. We added something like 3 or 4 to 1. You know, it, we really needed a lot more. And when you're done with uh, making the green sand, that's actually what you're going to use to cast around your object. So in this particular case, here we have the G-Create plate. So you take the plate, and you put down uh, basically a frame, and in this case, it's the, uh, a cut-down piece of, uh, of a, a bucket. And then you pack your sand all around the object and really, you know, push it in there and pack it in there, especially um, with, like, a piece of wood or something that you can kind of stamp it down in. And this is supposed to make it so that the, uh, the sand really gets in all the cracks, or cracks and crevices around your, your print. Uh, the problem was I think the sand was too wet, so even though we used the, um, the baby powder there on the actual 3D print, it still just kind of kept sticking to the print a lot. So that was probably our biggest biggest hurdle. That and the sand grains were probably just too large because we really were not getting the detail we wanted. So as I mentioned before, <laughs> the first blast furnace didn't exactly work out too well. It was just too open and we really couldn't get the, uh, the aluminum to melt. Actually, the piece you see here uh, in this new blast furnace, um, that actually was a piece we tried melting the previous day and we threw it back in here. So this has a much tighter structure and a lot more coal and a much hotter flame because of the actual the um, hair dryer. And then now we're remelting the stuff we tried melting the previous day. And uh, this stuff, it melted really fast. We got we got this thing very hot. Uh, again, we're using welding gloves and you know we have a lot of protection because it was getting getting to be pretty hot. It, you can see the CMU brick and block on top actually just basically crumbling. So here you see um, uh, molten aluminum, which is a lot of fun. We actually, uh, we melted a lot of cans, but we also had some really good high quality um, just aluminum scrap from uh, from building the printers. And that's what really melted the best. Okay, so now we have some models that have been designed, sliced, printed. Some are stuck in solid masses of plaster and other ones are ready to be casted uh, on top of some sand. So we're ready to go to the next step. So please check out part three here. And as always, check out our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages all at gcreate3d.